This video brought to you by Community Hospices Community Education Series. What's the most rewarding thing about being a hospice chaplain? Without a doubt, it is caring for the patients and their families, uh, especially in the line of work that I do, dealing with spiritual issues, talking with patients about those things and their families, and just seeing whether it's someone unloading some spiritual baggage they may have, or just seeing someone who is at peace and just wants to talk about you know, being at peace with their prognosis and just the gratefulness that, that family members tend to communicate to us as, as we're helping their family member along that journey. That's, that's what's most rewarding to it for me. I think a lot of people have a, a, a big misunderstanding uh, of what spiritual care is. So what is spiritual care? Spiritual care really is just evaluating what the spiritual needs of that particular patient are and then developing a plan to kind of help them work through those spiritual issues and if it may be working through some very tough spiritual things and it may be nothing more than just showing up saying hey how you doing having a good laugh and praying for somebody now you go to visit patients in their home or wherever they are um, what is a visit like for you it's just whatever is on that patient's mind for that day you know they may be thinking about some spiritual things uh, some folks don't have anything on their mind spiritually speaking at all which is good which means they're not worried about anything but the patient always drives the conversation and so there's a few things I know I'm gonna provide I'm gonna provide presence for them just by being there emotional support whether they're happy sad depressed whatever it is uh, I'm going to always be listening to them. That patient does a lot more talking than I do. You don't only deal with the patient, you deal with the family as well. Absolutely. There are some folks that uh, I do go and see the patient. I, I document what I see and what I talk about with those folks, but there are some patients I'm really there more for their family members to provide support because, you know, think about it. Uh, ours is a society that doesn't deal well with dying. We we put it off as much as we can and when we find out that that special someone uh, their life has a limit on it it really really kind of does a it really messes us up emotionally and mentally and so some folks need a lot of help getting to the place where they accept what's going to be happening to their loved one and I get to play a part in that now does a person have to have a chaplain if it were up to me, I would see every single one of our patients, but no, it is completely what the patient wants. Okay, now do you take the place of a patient's minister? Absolutely not. Uh, that's one of the misconceptions I think people have uh, about hospice chaplains is that we're going to come in, push their pastor out of the way, and we're going to take over. And that's not what we do at all. Do we provide uh, spiritual care for other faiths? We certainly do. Uh, one of the things about being a chaplain is we are to respect the beliefs that our patients have. And if I go into a home and uh, this person is not of the Christian faith, you know, we'll talk about that and we'll find some common ground, you know, between our faiths and I will find a way to minister to this person. Um, you You've done some special stuff for some patients. Tell, tell us about something you've spe special that you've done. Yeah, we really have. We had a gentleman who, uh, when we admitted him to our services, we found out very quickly that he was an artist. And when I walked in uh, his house to do his uh, spiritual assessment, uh, you know, he was sitting there and in a really good mood. He was a really peppy type of guy. And uh, I looked around on his walls and there were paintings there. And we're not talking about prints, we're talking about legit paint on canvas paint on paper and I said did you, did you do these yeah I've been I've been doing stuff for for you know most of my life I paint, I got a whole lot more so he pulled out a lot more that he showed us and and they hadn't been framed they were just kind of on his his uh, pad of paper there you know great big huge pad of paper and I said has anybody seen these he said no nobody but a few members of my family it would mean the world to me for people to see my art and so we called around and a locally owned art gallery uh, here in Greenville North Carolina the owner uh, was a former art teacher and when I asked her she was more than happy to help us out so uh, we gathered his art up and our staff paid to have his paintings framed and mounted and we took them all over to the art gallery had them hung up and uh, we did uh, a reception for him, you know, complete with food, 
Um, we had the press there, TV coverage was there, the uh, local paper was there, and when he got there that night, he was dressed to the nines. Uh, he looked good, he looked sharp, was full of energy, and mostly he and his sisters were so grateful that someone would go to all these links to do this just so people could see his art. Aaron, thanks for your time today. Thanks for sitting down and, and telling us a little bit about what you do. Uh, and thank you for what you do. You, you and your team truly serve others, and that is at the heart of what hospice is all about. You bet. Thank you, Ashley. If you have any questions about any of the topics covered in this video, we are available 24-7 to answer your questions. Call 1-800-569-1348 or visit us on the web at www.communityhch.com. Community Home Care and Hospice is one of the largest and most respected hospice agencies in the Southeast. Our mission is to provide the best care possible to our patients and their families. Our goal is to profoundly enrich the quality of life as life's journey nears its completion. Community Home Care and Hospice does not discriminate against any person on the basis of race, color, nationality, sex, age, disability, or ability to pay in admission, treatment, or reception of our services. This includes qualified veterans of any era or any other category protected by law.